What's up guys and gals, welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're we'll be taking a look at a title called Abalon. We previously took a look at this game way back when it released, but when it released it was under a different name. They called it Summoner's Fate. I think they've done like a full rebrand with like new art, new titles, they've got like new logos, new everything, and the game is coming out on the day that this video goes live. So, if you wanted to check this game out, that's what I'm going to be doing for the next 30 minutes, is giving you my impressions of the game. I've put about five hours into the game. I think it was fun. I did not at any point. So sometimes when you play a game for five or six hours, it can feel like a chore. Because, like, within two or three hours, you've made up your mind. You're like, all right, well, we got some problems here, buddy. But with this one, I had a good time playing for about five hours. If you've never seen Abalon before, it's kind of the spiritual successor, I guess, to something like Chandelar. You never saw Chandelar, it was a Magic the Gathering RPG way back in like, I don't know, sometime between like 1992 and 1997, like the White Border days, where you were a Heroes of Might and Magic style character that walked around, but instead of having an army, you had a magic deck, and you fought people all over the world, and you like conquered villages and stuff like that, and became the Supreme Battle Mage. This game is like that. You are a fantasy summoner that is put in a procedural dungeon, and you start out with just a couple of cards that allow you to summon monsters or buff monsters or shoot lightning or throw a fireball. And from there, you have to kind of put together and piece together a menagerie of monsters and cards that will ultimately get you through to the end. So you've got to cultivate kind of like a gimmick or a thing that'll get you through. Uh, the game is now out. The price point, I think, is like $29.99, which is pretty steep. So we're going to dive on in at the end of video. Hopefully I can give you some of my thoughts about the game, things I liked, things that I didn't like. This game is going to be available on PC, Mac, and at some point in the future they've said it's going on iOS and it's going on phones and tablets and stuff too. I don't know exactly when that's going to happen. Before I recorded this video, I browsed through the iOS app store and I didn't see it in there. And I took a look online at, like, the App Store for the Android or whatever and didn't see it in there either. So I'm guessing it's not out yet. I wanted to compare the pricing and figure out, like, is it, like, a free-to-play with in-app purchases? And this is, like, the $30 version that just has everything? Like, how's that going to... It's going to be $30 on the phone, too? Like, I wanted to compare the prices, but unfortunately it doesn't really have it up yet. So $30 for this one. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. The link is down below if you wanted to check the game out. And, of course, you find a link to my Discord and my Twitch stream. Let's start a new game. We'll play on adventure mode. Your sounds good. We'll put it on normal difficulty. Fair warning, this game is quite vicious. Uh, the AI in this game plays to win. They will pull some very sneaky combo turns on you that you didn't see coming. So watch out for it. We get to pick our summoner up front. It's up to you which one you want to pick. They've all got two different aspects. So this lady has void magic and she has chaos magic, which is fire and lightning. Uh, so basically she's got death magic and fire magic. Whereas if you went with Alberich or something, you would have Jesus magic and nature magic. And these guys can only build decks out of the elements that come from their corresponding element. And on top of that, everybody has a passive skill. So it looks like whenever she summons a unit, it gets one health and one attack. And then she can destroy her units to heal herself for three. Whereas if you compare that to Antares, all of his damage spells knock the enemy back by two spaces. If we were to take a look at the Pyromancer, it looks like she can attack from anywhere on the map. I don't know what firepower does, but she deals two fire damage and one damage to... Oh, she does like an AoE as her default attack instead of a melee. That's pretty cool. I can dig that. So everybody's got their own flavor, and this game uses weaponized achievements, which is how you unlock all the other summoners. I'm not very good at the game, so after like four or five hours of playing it, I've only unlocked five, but then again, I wasn't like targeting these either. You have to do specific stuff in this game to unlock summoners, and I haven't really been doing that. I've just been playing kind of normally. Uh, you will unlock some of them through normal play, but some of them you're going to have to like sit here and be like, oh, I got to run an ice guy so that I can unlock a bunch of ice characters, so on and so forth. Uh, I very much like Sibylla, so we'll probably go with her. You know me, I'm a big fan of necromancers, and that's exactly what she is, a necromancer. There's another necromancer that I want. He's over here, Antarax the Lich King, but I haven't gotten him yet. I gotta kill a, you got to kill a lot of units and win a lot of battles to unlock Antarax, so not quite there yet. 
We'll go with Sibylla, though, Antarax Light, and we'll customize her deck. Right now, she's got two Void Spells that will summon Skeleton Warriors, uh, but they get buffed up to two twos because of her ability. I kind of want to get rid of Necrotic Blast. I don't find that ability to be crazy useful in the early game. I mean, it can be, but I'm not a big, like, fan of cone attacks. Uh, the Skeleton Captain, I feel like, is a really good idea. Like, just an all-around banger of a card. The Skeleton Captain will buff every other skeleton that's on the battlefield with even more health and even more damage when he comes out. And so I feel like we've got a nice little 1-2-3 thing going on right now that'll work out pretty well. Let's go ahead and run it, and we'll see how it goes. Fair warning, I'm not crazy good at this game. I've never had the mind, nor the preference for card games. Haven't been a big card game guy for a very long time, but I'm going to do my best here to really make this a decent video. So at the beginning of each run, you will find yourself on the surface. you got to find the dungeon. Oh, cool, we got a D20. I'll talk about what that does in just a minute. We also got some lore right there, but we're not going to spend our time reading. We're going to spend our time playing here today. I'm going to break like every object I can possibly break for freebies before we go into the dungeon. Dungeon is usually in the bottom left. Hey, there's a little bit of money right there. Definitely going to need that as time goes along. All right, let's go in the dungeon. It's time. It's dungeoning time. So here in the dungeon... There's going to be a couple different rooms. Exploration is a big part of this game. Every room is going to be on the grid. Different rooms will have different things inside of them. Sometimes it's events. Sometimes it's little pieces of storyline. Sometimes it's lore books. Sometimes it's fights. Sometimes it's bosses, mini bosses. You never quite know what it's going to be. And the first thing you really, really understand about this game is that this game has a function called retreating. Anytime you enter a room, you are well within your rights to just walk right back out by clicking the retreat button. The game does not punish you for that. If you're the kind of player like me that doesn't like to walk away from a challenge and doesn't like to admit defeat like that because you got too much pride. Ooh, treasure room. Nice. I'll take some monies. Yeah, this is a skeleton chest. We can't open that till we have a skeleton key, but it usually has good stuff inside of it. This guy is by himself. What does he do? Let's see here. He is a summoner, so he's just like us. That means he's going to summon spells and fight us, and he can summon other monsters and things. We should retreat this one, because we've only got three cards in our deck. And this game kind of has an unconventional way of functioning. Uh, basically, every time you cast a spell, that spell is gone forever until you sleep. This game does not have a discard pile that you shuffle back into your draw. You have a limited number of spells until the next time you find a sleeping spot, like this right here, in the dungeon, which means that if you only have like two or three spells, you need to kind of have an easy fight that you can one turn kill. Otherwise, you run a very strong risk of running out of cards and having to fight everything by yourself, which is incredibly dangerous because we only have five HP. We're not a warrior. We're a wizard. We're a summoner. What's inside of here? Anything? Can I click on those? What about you? What you got for me? The Alchemist's Diary accounts a lifelong passion for studying insects and their extraordinary strength relative to size. It seems this person struggled with a frequent ridicule for their own small size from bigger dungeon denizens. A half-finished vial of potion reads, At last, this will show them. Okay. Uh, so this guy right here, we will transform into a beetle, we will shrink, or we will grow. I don't really care about that much. Can I walk away? I don't even want to do this anymore. It's not, I thought I was going to get a permanent bonus. So this is what the D20s are for. If you don't like your odds, uh, you can go ahead and you can roll multiple dice, like so. I'm going to waste all my dice to show you what that looks like. Since we succeeded, we drink the potion. We get bigger. This game has lots of things like that. I'll talk about that a little bit later, too. And for the next fight, we're actually kind of like a scary person. We can actually hurt people. This is a shop right here. We can buy bodyguards inside of here, or we can buy cards from Inkydoo. I don't want to spend my money just yet, so that's not what we're going to do. But bodyguards are kind of like super units that start deployed on the map and back you up in fights. They're great. Uh, this one is also kind of a little bit difficult for us. These guys drain your health. I can one-shot them for sure, but I feel a little bit nervous about my prospects here, even with summoning. So we'll back off that one real quick, and let me see if I can find us an actual... We're wasting a lot of time out of the video right now, looking for the initial easy fights. I found one. 
This is an initial easy fight. We should be able to torch this one, no problem. We're gonna start out by summoning our Skeletors, and there they are. Now this game's a little bit non-traditional. When you attack an enemy, uh, they get a counter-attack a lot of the time, so you gotta watch out for that. Now my Skeletons have a special ability. They block any of the first damage that comes from the front or the sides before they can be damaged. So this should be just a gimme fight right here. Uh, everything in the game, counter-attacks. You will see my units do that right now. Oh, really? That guy didn't counter-attack. Alright, well, we'll go ahead and finish that dude off then, and we got a bunch of cards to pick from. Uh, the game does have scores, so the faster you clear enemies and the more efficiently you clear enemies, uh, you will your score will go up, and the game does have leaderboards and stuff like that where you can compete with other summoners. We got a Skeleton Archer. That's good. Skeleton Archers are very useful. And then we got a three-card draft right here. Non-undead units get minus one, minus one, Cone of Cold, or another Skeletal Archer. I'm going to say go with Kona Cold because I want to cast some Frost Spells and freeze some people so that I can unlock some of the Cold Wizards. Now, we've got a big old grip of Spidarians in here. That's a little terrifying. I'm going to summon my dude over here, and we're going to have him just bomb a shot right there on that spider just to kill one of them off. These guys can move pretty far, so I'm going to need to put out other Skeletons that will protect this unit, but we're gonna need to rest after this fight because we're pretty much out of everything. First attack's a block, big counter attack right there, no kill. We'll get the counter attack right there and he is officially dead. We will fire a shot over to there. And then we will move you, I believe to right here. There we go. So you've been moved into position and my summoner's just gonna kinda hang back, but he may try to loop around and hit my summoner. He did. Uh, this game will always prioritize attacking your character if it can. Now, if you attack an enemy from behind or from the diagonals behind, they do not get a counter attack and any blocking mechanic they might have, like our skeletons, does not function. We got a heal right there and we got a new card. We got another skeleton archer. I think we're running a range build this time around and there's a skeleton key right there. We can go crack open that chest that we found near the beginning of the dungeon. This game also has a nice quality of life feature where you can click on the map and teleport to any cell that you want to go to. That's very nice of them to do. Oh yeah, we needed the chest though. I forgot about the treasure chest. Let's go to the treasure chest real quick. What you got, treasure chest? Just a bunch of dice, huh? That's kind of good, but I wanted money so I could buy a bodyguard. We're going to be a we're going to we're going to struggle a little bit till we have a bodyguard. If you'll be my bodyguard, I can be your long lost pal. Honestly, one of the best songs ever written. I don't think there is any time where I will not get hyped to just like, nah, 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 like the Paul Simon, man, Paul Simon, consistent, consistent as hell. Uh, this turtle right here will allow you to delete things from your deck and swap things out so that you get some control because you don't just get stuck with the draft in this game. Uh, you can remove things and add things to your deck, but for right now, we've got so few cards that I'm not going to use that feature. We also need to track down another campsite, I think. Uh, there's another campsite. Ask and ye shall receive. Break these crates real quick, see what we find. Okay, nothing in here. Didn't get any bonuses or freebies. We got a big old feeder rat fight over here. This one's super easy. I'm gonna torch all three of you with my opening salvo. You've all been frozen and you are now all dead. Unfortunately, that was all my mana for the first turn, so we're gonna, we're gonna get touched a little bit here. Oh, no, we're not. Never mind. I'm the champion of the world, and I never get touched by the enemy ever. I'm going to put down a skeleton archer. He's going to put down the blappers on that guy. We're going to go ahead and hit him right there. And that's another fight down. Let's keep developing this deck and seeing if we can figure out a gim. I killed him in the first turn. How was my score? Oh, I think my score was over. Never mind. I didn't look at it well enough. Skeleton warrior, and he's free. Very nice. I like free. Free is good. Now we've got drain life which I think is a reference to World of Warcraft. Isn't that the, uh, that's very similar to the icon that Warlocks had back in vanilla World of Warcraft, isn't it? For Drain Life, I think they're referenced. I think that's like a homage. I'm gonna guess that the developers might be World of Warcraft players of the past. Uh, let's see here, and then we've got a Skeleton Hound. Warcry, gain 1-1 one, one for every surrounding undead. Oh, I got plans. 
All right, we'll take him. I see it coming together now. What's in this room? More fighting. I will take more fighting. He can't get to me. Put down an archer right here. Archer is going to kill their archer because they need to close a gap before they can get to me. I'll put a skeleton down right there. Probably don't need it, but I'm going to do it anyways. We'll see what they decide to do. So this guy right here, we want to get around in behind him. Perfect. No counterattack, and we want to blast him. He's going to block that, which is kind of unfortunate. But that's okay. I can live with disappointment. I'm going to try and bait him right here, but I guarantee he's going to hit this guy in the back. Oh, no, it worked. The AI made a the, the AI made a boo-boo right there. Usually the AI plays pretty smart in this game. It's impressed me. I brought it up a couple times, but the AI has impressed me several times in this game with, like, the in-depth combo play that they make with just the perfect movement where you're like, oh, my God, if a human did that, I would just be like, I just got styled on. Armored rats. Armor 2. Pierce. Oh, he ignores other people's armor. And he debuffs their attack. I don't know if I'll leave him in my deck. He seems a little small and unready for war, but... Catch of the day. A ruthless gang of marauders sounds, surrounds their latest catch. Dark images of the horrible fate that might befall the victim are interrupted as the marauders spot your party and shift their focus on you, the next target. What did I draw? What I what I draw here will decide whether or not I feel like I need to retreat or not. And what I have left in my deck. I have a captain and a hound. This one's kind of like a maybe. We might be able to handle this. We might not be able to handle this. They've got us beaten in armor and health, and I'm not sure I have the depth of deck right now. The length. I don't know if my deck is long enough to to get through that fight properly. This room's got a fight, though. A uh, little bit more manageable. How far does he move? Not far enough, and there's no line of sight breaks here. So I'm going to get chewed on pretty good. Oh, they're all archers? I might be dead here. So troops in front of you don't block ranged attacks in this game. So I'm actually a little bit worried they're all just going to focus fire me on the opening turn. In fact, I feel very much as though that's what's going to happen. I don't know if this blocks line of sight, but I'm going to give it my best. We got kind of screwed by the map here. Yeah, that's kind of a whack arrangement right there. That room really shouldn't exist. Uh, so that's one of our lives gone. Unfortunate. That was kind of a whack room in that there was literally nothing we could do but retreat. I do think that units should provide line of sight in this game. They should block for you, basically. Uh, but that's not a thing. They also don't have zones of control, and they don't have areas of opportunity, which is an odd choice, because that's one of the main reasons why the enemy can just streak straight towards you and punch the crap out of you without any chance to really, like, stop it from doing it on the opening turn. It's it's one of those things that has bothered me as I've played. Is it just one guy in here? I think it's just one guy. I guess I could summon a rat. I mean, I don't know. How far can he move? Huh. Odd choice, but I'm not going to let that happen. Aw, oh, he's trying to get it so he opens on the first turn. What are you going to do if I do this? Same thing. Okay, I'm coming down to here then. Wow, he wants me, dude. He wants me bad. He wants me something rotten. I got two armor on the rat, so we're good. That's okay. Rat's armor ate it. And then he's now dead. Bye-bye. Good stuff. Took us a little bit longer to clear that fight than I would have liked. Necrotic Blast will probably help. Yeah, we could use a little bit more range right about now. I could use some more money, too. I still don't have a bodyguard. 
I like legit need a bodyguard. The sarcophagus is inscribed with symbols. The unsettling cacophony of scratching sounds can be heard from the inside. I'm gonna open it. I don't care. I got loads of dice. There we go. Give me that. Give me that 17 right there. Ice javelin. Very cool. That's one of our weaknesses. Is this we don't have enough range. Ooh, this guy's kind of a pain. I fought this guy before. So this guy drains health and he summons mobs and things like that too. This guy's gonna be kind of a headache until we have bodyguards. I'm out. Oh, there was money over there too? Oh, I had no idea. Okay. Now uh, you can't control your character with either WASP or with the mouse click. In combat, everything is like a click and drag. I kind of feel like that's not the greatest control scheme for the PC. Uh, it feels very much like the game was designed to play with your thumbs. I, I would have much preferred that you kind of like have a move button, you click that to move where you want to go, then you pick your facing, or you can attack afterwards. Like, I don't know, traditional turn-based controls are better than, I don't know. I feel personally like the thumbs are the most morally debased of all the fingers. I can't prove this by any metric or any concrete information, but when I see a thumb, I think evil and I've never been able to get that thought out of my head since I was a child so this room gave us a little bit of cash we need 25 more though before we're gonna be able to do anything proper uh, this is a mercenaries den we can hire these guys right here and in fact I would love to hire one of these guys right here we have a fate encounter over here we have an empty hallway there unexplored there key over there so that's a summoner I think it's in our best interest to just track down a little bit of cash here or a dragon, you know, a dragon, cash, they're all somewhat similar to one another. I think I'm going to stand my ground on this one. So this guy's big and he moves a lot and he can fly. So protecting my summoner is going to be a little bit challenging, but I'm going to do my best here. Maybe we live through it, maybe we don't. I'm going to put you down. I'm going to put you down. They do have an archer, which is kind of a bummer, so I need to kind of break line of sight here somewhere. Next turn, we'll drop the skeleton captain, and that should buff everybody up to even higher levels. He's angling for me right now, I can tell already. So we'll drop a few more summons right there. And then we'll drop a skeleton captain back there. And that has given us some pretty good options here for scrumming with the enemy. Now we don't really want to leave him a spot to land. We sort of want to bait him in the best that we can. But now that that archer's down, oh, that's a spike pit right there. I can't step on that. That would be a mistake. Let's move over to here. I'm gonna scrunch in a little bit closer to the wall to protect myself. That guy can move to there. He can actually almost get to me, but we'll see what the AI decides to do. So first big soak right there, it looks good. He stepped on the flames, which is fantastic for us. That's really good because I actually think we can clinch a kill here. Maybe. Go ahead. Nope, not you. You advance. Give me a skeleton archer. Skeleton archer. We kind of got to decide on a good spot where we want our archer to be at. Like, I don't know, man. This big guy's a liability, but, like, I think we can drop him, dude. Uh, we'll freeze those guys right there. Move in. Smack him. Smack him. Good kill, good kill. That dragon's actually, like, a big threat, so I'm happy we killed that. Uh, you're on a spike pit. I need you over here. I may have actually broken out a few too many cards for that fight. Oh no, dude, you shot me in my sternum. Oh, that's right. I think he has to be stationary, right? Yeah, he can't move and shoot. That's what it was. That's what happened there. Okay, that was my fault. I forgot my I forgot my little creature's capabilities. That was on me. It's not the game's fault. Pick up that card real quick. Uh, the touch of death. Destroy an adjacent enemy minion. Okay, kind of expensive. I don't know when I would run that. There we go, first big fight down. Very happy about it. Worked out pretty good. 
All right, well, I like how all your minions, they just leave at the end of the fight. They're like, all right, union mandated undead break. I'm gonna go catch a coffee real quick. Anybody want anything? Crawler? Danish? Donut? Apple fritter? Cinnamon roll? Anybody? Bear claw? Sorry, I have, I have an encyclopedic knowledge of breakfast foods because breakfast foods are objectively the best foods in existence. We can get a dark elf archer. She's got the same thing going on that our other unit has. She can't move and shoot, but she does poison things, which can be a boon. Uh, we could also get the we could also get the hellhound. The hellhound ignores armor and blocks and moves six spaces and hits like a truck. I think I'm gonna go with that because we're we've got a lot of like grist for the mill units right now, but we don't really have any units that really like bring it you know oh my god money all right let's go get our bodyguard shall we real question is which bodyguard do we want so we have this guy down here she is a 314 with flying which means she ignores collision so that's good and it looks like she takes control of units that she hits if they have five or less life which would be really good for yoinking units from enemies but she is pricey we don't have to pay that price, but she's an interesting option. We can also just go with the bruiser option here. This guy has armor, block. He's He puts vulnerability to fire on the enemy in case you've got a fire deck going. This guy over here has armor three, knockback one, and all other marauders on the field of play get plus two, plus two when he gets summoned onto the field. What do you do? She's a bandit, and she's a white card. That means she can go in any deck, just like artifacts in Magic the Gathering. Uh, you can take a, a card with a white background into any deck that you want, regardless of its affinities. She taunts, she buffs other bandits, and it looks like whenever she kills something, she gets plus one to attack and plus one to her health. If she was an undead unit that benefited from my personal skills and the summoning of my... The summoning of my captain, I think she would be a game-winning card. I don't know who I want here out of these. I think I'll probably go with the Vampire Hypnotist, just because of the flight and some of the other interesting stuff she can do. If I can dig up 75 more gold, we can get a second bodyguard, and then we'll be ready to take down some like real, actual challenges like bosses and stuff. For now, let's continue circling around. This is a shop, obviously. Oh, no, it's not. It's a summoner. Okay. I only have four cards left. I feel like we probably need to sleep. Before we could actually do like a really good job here and not get instantly crushed. I'm going to retreat it real quick. We're going to sleep inside this room and I'm going to, I can, I can take him, but I need my, I need my summons back. There we go. Now we're looking good. Uh, I'm actually just going to break camp instantly. I just wanted to refill my deck real fast. I think we got one campfire left, though, so we need to make this one worth it. We also need to decide if we want to go after the Taurus or whether we want to go after the Bone Crusher or, like, what we want to do here. We also don't have the boss key yet. I have decision constipation. I never know what I want to do in games like this. Let's go beat up that little group right there up north of us. And we'll go wipe out the little group with the four archers that embarrassed us earlier. Yeah, this fight's a little bit crunchy, but it'll be okay. How far can you move? I think we're safe on most ends. If she moves up to there and smacks him... We should mostly be okay. Uh, her health actually is like our health, though. Like, she needs to be healed in between fights. We'll bring in the rat, too, just to finish off this guy. Perfect. Okay. I'm going to kind of move around. We'll see what these guys decide to do. Okay, he killed my rat. But my rat did get a counterattack, so that's good. I can move up here and smack this guy, but he's going to heal for more than I would hit him for because these guys have life drain. Realistically, the best option would be to ice javelin him so he doesn't get a retaliation. Yeah, I only see one way that we kill this guy.
good. All right, he's down. What can that guy? Oh, that guy can't even get to me either. Good. You love to see it. Other thing that I need to do is I can power steal you so that you life drain less. I would prefer to resolve this without using any more summons. But I don't know that it's necessarily going to be a winning prospect. Oh, she took control of him. Nice. I didn't know the ability would work on those guys. Good. You love to see it. A little flawless win. Dark Elf Witch right there. Good stuff. I'll take a Dark Elf Witch. Anything good inside? I need money, please. Not dice. Money. Money. Come on. There we go. Unfortunately, not enough. I want another bodyguard, but they're not giving it to me. They're being big, stupid, meanie faces, chat. Chat, take the game out back and, and make it cut a switch. All right? So this guy's a summoner, but he doesn't look that tough. I'm going to advance pretty aggressively on this guy, I think. I will summon an archer. Well, I'll summon an archer right there. I'm somewhat curious to see what this guy's going to do. Can he attack right there? He cannot. All right, move up. So he's going to do Shadow Bolt, four damage, killed my archer. Not super unexpected. Skeleton Reaver up. Skeleton Reaver is going to get an attack to our back. All right. Fair enough. I don't really want to trap myself here. I'd prefer not to. You up to there. To right here. Summon a witch. Which will zap him pretty good. No moves available. I don't have any undead on the field right now, so I can't do my dog combo like I want to. Not a bad opening. Oh, he touch of death my minion. Look at you over here being all good at your job. That'll put one behind me. I don't want that. I have five mana. Do I really? It may be time to build this super unit. Hold on. So we'll put you guys right there. You cruise out that way. Summon you right there. And summon you right there. Boom, baby. There it is. Alright, so I need you guys to move. Okay, two damage. Oh, I think he's got me. Oh, no, he didn't kill. Good. Okay, I got to go up here then, and now we need to trap this fool in. You go ahead and do the first initial attack. That'll break his shield. Shield be broken. Basically, just trap this guy in is, is all that I really want from you. I'm a little bit worried he's going to spam more spells at me on the next turn. That's a little bit of a horrifying possibility here. All he needs is a Shadow Bolt. Oh, dude, my doggy. A Flesh Golem, huh? Interesting. What's the flesh golem do? Damage dealt to your summoner is redirected to the golem. I feel like I'm like mostly okay with that prospect. I can freeze him, but it's going to hurt my own guy. 
And the two damage doesn't really affect the conflict at all. Let's see what he does. A diagonal skeleton captain. Oh, it's my skeleton captain now. Very nice. A uh, skeleton captain. Oh. Well, she tried, I mean. She did her best. That's five damage right there. Go ahead and do it. Three damage right there. Go ahead and do it. And we win. That was our first summoner drop right there. The summoners are like the first of kind of like your, your next big challenges. And I'm not very good at games like this. But I do have fond memories of Chandelar from when I was younger. And so that's what it reminded me of. I like the flesh golem. It's a cool idea. It's very expensive though. Then again, it does kind of give you an insurance policy towards getting schwacked. There's our health back, unfortunately. It didn't res our dear friend. Oh, we need one more and I can have two bodyguards, dude. It didn't resurrect our bodyguard, which is kind of a bummer. I don't think I ever went south right here, but let's go take a little sneaky peek at what's south over here. Uh, it looks like a shop. Yep, it's a shop where we can buy some more stuff. Shadow Bolt is actually like a really nice idea. Being able to deal four damage outright and just like dunk on somebody from across the arena feels very attractive to me. And what was down in here? That was an elite fight. And that was the skeleton archer fight. Let's see this event over here. Oh yeah, the event was, it wasn't really an event. It's a fight with marauders, let's be honest. I'm gonna need to figure out my situation though here. Like I don't really have much a choice. Yeah, it's another summoner over here too. I need to save my campsite. So I kind of need to win this fight with just the seven cards that I have on hand. Well, I just gave up the win. So I had to use a campfire because there's no challenges left on the map that I can do with only four cards. I may have over summoned uh, when I was fighting against. I still have, when I was fighting this guy, I may have over summoned. And so I haven't quite gotten the, I haven't quite gotten the rhythm down in my time played of this game of like how much to summon versus under summoning versus over summoning. But now that I've got my deck back inside my control, I do think we have a very, very strong opening turn here. Unless this guy has an AoE, and then I just totally wasted my time. Now you guys pair off and go fight your partners. Everybody go do -si do I'm going to advance about as much as I can here. Shadow Bolt is out, so one of my guys died. He heals. All right, one of his skeletons is down. He blasted him, which gave him another skeleton. Shield is down there, though. Okay. First things first. Yeah, I think that's a perfectly fine sortie. We'll put down the Dark Elf Witch over there. We'll kill him. Dark Elf Witch. We'll... Attack over here, I think. That sounds good. Now, I have to keep it to, like, these cards that I have right here because we have to fight the boss after this with just the cards we still have on hand, which is just kind of nightmarish. But like I said, I still have not mastered... Oh, she returns fire because she's a ranged character. Because our ranged characters get counterattacks, too. And they all want me. They want me bad. It's not gonna work. You're dead on this turn anyways. Kind of. Wonder what's gonna happen if I do that. Oh, he still takes the damage. Understood. Unfortunately, I got to use another card. I think this is this is definitely an L. Like we lose this map very badly. I just don't have enough cards I think to take on the boss. 
Well, did it give me back the ones that lived? I don't think it did. Yeah, it didn't give me back the ones that lived, so tough one. We got another replacement over here, though, which means I can get my flesh golem back at least. These crystals right here, as you beat rooms, you'll get these red and blue crystals. They will lower the final boss's HP and the amount of spells that he gets uh, per turn for each one that you have. So they tend to be really nice to have. Ideally, you want to strike a balance between your summons, how many of them you have, not burning through all of them, and your ability... Uh, to take down the... Oh my god, there's so many goodies in here. I get another bodyguard. I get another bodyguard. Let me get a bodyguard. Uh, rejuvenation vial. Oh my god, that just saved the run. Uh, there are also consumables in this game. And one cool feature about this game is that the graphics aren't too much to look at. But if I put a helmet from a consumable on any character in the game, they will then have a helmet on. Even like rats and stuff. Uh, it'll say, but if you use a potion of giant growth on, like, a dog, it'll turn into a big giant werewolf. Like, they actually went through and designed graphics in this game for not only equipping your characters with weapons. Like, she's got a sword right now. If I gave her a scythe that was inside my consumables, she would have a scythe in her hand. Like, if I gave her a helmet, she would have a helmet on. If I gave her armor, it would change her armor around. Like, the game's got lots of little details like that. And so, I don't love the control scheme of this game. I, I definitely think, like, standard fair... I feel as though standard fair turn-based controls would have been better for the PC platform. Knowing that this game is planning on releasing onto mobile platforms, it makes sense why they went with the control scheme that they did, but I do think it's a suboptimal control scheme for the PC platform and a mouse and keyboard. Like, I would have preferred just, like, the normal 2AP system for us. My problems with the game... Uh, pretty much the fact that it's 30 bucks in all honesty. Uh, 30 bucks is very expensive for a title, especially when you're looking at the fact that like Slay the Spire is 25 and that's one of the verified goats of card games uh, on, on the platform. You've also got Monster Train rocking around at 25, which is another verified goat of the platform. I'm sure there will probably be some kind of release day discount. I don't know for sure, so don't quote me on it. But still, the price point is very high for this game. That being said... I've only had one crash to desktop while playing around with this current build. That was about it. There's a lot of variety here. There's a lot of events here. There's a ton of stuff to unlock. There's a ridiculous amount of cards, factions, interactivities, interesting things to do with your builds. So if you are a card game fan and you've got 30 bucks to burn, I think this is a very good selection. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. This is Abalon. If it's outside your price range, I'd say just hang tight and wait for a sale uh, because it's still a pretty dope game. I will catch you all later. Thank you for swinging on through, and that's all I got. Bye, folks.